Wait, wait, wait. Before you do your sport, we're going to tell you how to prevent an ACL injury. Yeah, we've talked a lot about what they are and how to treat them, but let's just get in front of it. Let's not have one. Thanks for joining us. It's Talking With Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Salzo. I'm Dr. Brad Ring. We have a guest today, Dr. Tim Deacon, who's dedicated his life to treating people's knee injuries, and he's done 6,000 ACL surgeries alone. That's, okay, a lot, that's a lot of ACL how surgeries. How many years now you've been doing this? ACL? 35 years of 35 doing ACL years. reconstruction. 35 years. Did we even know the knee had an ACL 35 <laughs> years ago? They did some wacky stuff 35 years ago for we the thought ACL. It was eh? just, we thought the knee was just a knuckle yeah. back then. That's right. I, I sprained my shin knuckle, Doc. Okay, so let's talk ACL, very, very common injury. How many would we estimate, say in the US, we have a lot of US viewers, we're Canadian, but so divide by 10, but how many in the US a year right. would you say? Uh, stats are at least 200,000 200, a year. 000. I think that's an underestimate. Okay. Uh, ACLs get missed. Right. And we want to try, uh, first of all, to pick those up, but more importantly, we want to try and prevent the yeah, injuries. Yeah, let's talk okay? about preventing an ACL injury. So there are some things that we can do to prevent injuries that we know. Number one is you can stay physically fit exercise regularly, keep the muscles around your knee strong. Okay, that okay? makes sense. And there are specific muscle groups that you want to target. So the hamstring is the most important muscle group to keep strong, to try and decrease the risk of an ACL. The one at the back of your thigh. And interestingly, exactly. people do not focus on the hamstring. Right? A lot of people go to the gym and they're working on their quads, but the hamstring is a little bit neglected. And they say that you need to have two-thirds hamstring strength compared to your quad strength to help prevent an injury. Correct. And so one of the big problems is that a lot of the high-risk sports like skiing are what we call quad active sports where the quadriceps gets much, much stronger than the hamstring. So you got to really focus on keeping the hamstring strong. The second thing you need to do is keep the muscles around the hips and the core very strong as well. Uh, and muscles around even the lower leg, the calf muscles. Uh, so keeping the muscles around the knee strong will decrease the risk of injury. Okay. Um, the next thing, do not participate in a high risk sport when you're fatigued, when you're tired, because that's, uh, that's gonna lead to an increased incidence of injuries. Okay, that's okay. a classic one. If you're getting fatigued, you're getting tired, stop your sport, it's time for apres ski. It's the last run of the day. The right. It's always the last run of the yeah. day. So be careful. Because who's gonna go back out and do another run after they've blown their ACL? So the next thing you want to do is you want to be careful with certain movements and be very aware of what movements can lead to an ACL injury. One of the, the, the classic ones is landing from a jump. So people that come down from a jump want to try and keep their knees over their feet and try and keep things lined up. You really don't want the knee going in. Going inward is a high risk for ACL injuries, particularly in females. You want to try and land softly and you want to use your knees to absorb the impact. Um, there has been a lot of work done on trying to educate people how to land from jumps in basketball. It applies to soccer as well. There's a, a lot of work in skiing. Robert Johnson from University of Vermont uh, did a lot of work in how to try and prevent injuries in skiing. Well, there's the like obvious. Recently? Like recently? Well, no, 45 years of and work. And you, you knew him, did yeah, you not? I did. I mean, he's, he's done amazing work in trying to decrease the incidence of injuries. Thank Some things you, are obvious in skiing, right? Like we want to make sure your bindings are properly adjusted, your boots are properly fitted. Um, you want to avoid going on terrain that's way above your level. So you don't want to be going on a double black diamond when you're a beginner. Um, but there's other things you can do too. One of the things we know now is do not try and get up from a fall when you're still moving skiing. So people that are falling, they go down and they try and get back up. There's a much higher risk of blowing oh, your ACL. Okay, oh, let me just fall. Yeah. yeah, just fall. Just fall, just fall and stop and to then get up. Finish that um, yard sale. Try not to sit back down on your skis. Try not to drop your arm behind. So there's okay. some really good videos. Uh, you can find them in the Vermont Safety Research Association uh, on how to prevent injuries in skiing. Um, there are also some really good exercises, particularly warm-up exercises that are promoted by FIFA, which is the International Soccer Association. Um, there's a three-phase warm-up before practices and games that they recommend that you do three times a week, uh, and that can lead to a reduction in the incidence of ACL injuries of up to 50%. So there's things that we can do to try and decrease the incidence of injuries. That's a good one. If you're playing soccer or football, depending on what part of the world you're watching this video, um, make sure your club is participating in something like the FIFA program because that is an evidence-based program yeah. to reduce. Brad, give us the numbers. So, so one of the recent meta-analyses was a 34% reduction in all injuries and a 29% reduction in lower leg injuries that had pooled some other meta-analyses. And it's called FIFA 11 because there are 10 exercises, then the 11th component is promoting fair play, which 
when you have fair play, you reduce the risk of injury to yourself and to other people just by being a nice person on the field. So make sure your, your, your club is taking part in that warm-up exercise uh, and make that part of your routine, the FIFA routine if you're playing football or soccer, which millions of people are around the world. And now, Tim, you brought up a good point. So you talked about high-risk sports. So you mentioned basketball, you mentioned soccer, you mentioned skiing. And you also mentioned females. Are they at higher risk of getting an ACL injury than males? Yeah, females are definitely at a higher risk. Um, we believe that it's related to some anatomical issues and also probably some hormonal issues. Okay. Uh, but much higher incidence of ACL injuries in females per hour of participation in sports. Okay. All right. So we've got... The education component, the not extending yourself beyond your skill level uh, component for skiing. Uh, we've got the FIFA stuff, and there's similar exercises you can do before skiing uh, to stop your injury. How to fall, how to land a jump. Um, anything else? Did I miss something? So people ask about bracing. Okay. Ah, that's good. Um, there is some evidence in North American football that the linemen uh, may experience a decreased incidence of injuries wearing a brace. And so... Uh, that's about the only really solid evidence we have for using a brace to try and prevent injury. So you'll see a lot of football players uh, wearing a brace, particularly the linemen. Do you think that's more because these are big, strong guys and people are falling on their legs, often in bent position? Probably less the planting and twisting. It's more the kind of getting hit from the side, I think. I believe so, yeah. Tackle. In, in, in the spirit of the Super Bowl this weekend, leave a comment about who you think is going to win the Super Bowl Ooh. on Sunday. This might not come out until after the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. Well, don't leave a comment then. <laughs> um, all right. So, preventing a, um, who, who, who more commonly gets it? Male athletes or female athletes? Females. Females Maybe get more common. injuries. Yeah. What's the worldwide most common? Put you on the spot. Worldwide most common sport for injuring your knee? Well, I can tell you my two are soccer and skiing, and that's pretty much the worldwide there you go. picture, too. All right. There you go. Now you know if you're partaking in those sports in particular, but basketball for sure happens to, American football, rugby, those sports as well. Take this advice and it'll help prevent an ACL injury. Now you know. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. Check out our other videos on ACL injuries where Dr. Deacon does share his ex wealth of knowledge and expertise. Okay. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Dr. Deacon.